report from the CDC finds the nation's deadly opioid epidemic is getting worse. The CDC says there was a nearly 30 percent jump in emergency room visits for opioid overdoses along a 15 month stretch. These increases were seen among both men and women and for all age groups. Rates also went up in every region of the country and in two states, Wisconsin and Delaware. The numbers more than doubled. Here to talk about this really tragic news is Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John Lapook. Um, Dr. Lapook, I feel like we keep just hearing more and more bad details about this opioid epidemic. Do we know what the cause of these numbers is? Well, you know, the feeling is that there are three waves, that there was initially doctors having a big role in, in overprescribing opioids. Yep. And, you know, it was kind of encouraged. We were encouraged to, to do that, saying that, you know, people can't, they're not going to get addicted. to One percent addiction rate. Yeah, you know, but it turned out to be a lot more than that. And then heroin was the second wave. And this third wave is fentanyl and drugs like fentanyl that are much, much more powerful even than heroin and that, uh, that are, are causing deaths, people. There was some thought that uh, this drug Narcan, which uh, helps stop overdoses, could be playing a role in these new numbers being so high. What's the thinking there? Well, I mean, you know, how exactly do these numbers all, you know, figure? It's, it's not exactly clear, but there is this thing called Narcan, nar nar naloxone, which is an, anti an antidote to any kind of opioid, and it was quite remarkable. I was there at the very beginning when, you know, back in the, in the 80s when we knew about it and people would come into the emergency rooms, overdose, you'd give them the Narcan, they wake up and it'd be like miraculous. So one thing that some people are saying is, well, maybe, you know, it's the same, the thinking is the same number, not necessarily right. an increase in the number of people using, but that the stuff that they're using is more deadly, so there, there are increased number of deaths. One thing that some people have said is, well, maybe it's, you know, you're giving them Narcan, and instead of dying, they're going to the emergency room, getting revived, and staying alive to then overdose again. I, I don't know that that's really felt to be a big part of the numbers. I think a big part of the numbers of the hospitalization is that you have much more potent uh, types of, of chemicals that are, people are putting in their systems. Right, and especially when we see the death numbers going up, that's a suggestion that Narcan isn't saving all these all these lives. Here, here, is, here is a sobering thought about that. You know, you hear 30 percent, 20 percent. It's hard to get your arms around these numbers. Yeah. But in 2016, for the very first time, at 63,000 deaths related to uh, these kinds of overdoses, you surpass all the deaths that happened in the entire Vietnam War. Jeez. I mean, that takes your breath away, and it's really hard to get your arms around that. So this is a huge crisis. And so what, what should we be doing that we're well, not doing or that we're not doing what, enough of? What we're doing is yelling fire, right, yeah. right now. Fire. But in addition to We've yelling... we yelling fire a long time. Yes, and, but, and, and you can't just yell fire, right? You got to like maybe call the fire department and maybe you get some fire extinguishers in and maybe you start thinking about building the building differently up to code. Maybe you put some sprinklers in. So the thinking is, and there's a lot of people who have been doing a lot of thinking about this. There are symposiums about it. Uh, President Trump did declare a national, it, to be a national emergency last fall. And now there's some meetings about it. But you got to put really, you know, funding behind it, resources behind it. There are a lot of different things that people have proposed. For example, once somebody comes into the emergency room and they've overdosed, well, then what? A lot of the big problems is they go home and they do it again. So you have to have maybe social workers or even people who have been through it before, people who are addicts or who have recovered, to be following them along and to try to help them get into a program. You need to identify risk factors. You know, what makes people at increased risk of overdosing? And then are there you know, programs where you can give people naloxone, Narcan? Right now, it used to be able to, you had to give it by injection. You can give it in the nose now. Huh. So people can, can actually save their friends if they have access to it. Purdue Pharma, who has taken a lot of heat for their role in promoting what they said was going to be the safe use of these drugs, last month said they won't market them to doctors the way they have in the past. Is there a change in industry and in the medical community about, about these drugs? There's, there's a big change in the medical community. So, for example, in New York State, I now have to, it's a pain in the neck to prescribe a triplicate, an, an, an opioid. It used to be called a triplicate because it was a pad, and you literally wrote it out. It was a special pad, and there was a triplicate. There were all these, uh -huh. you know, carbon paper things. Now it's an electronic database. You have to go online. I've got to check, put in all this stuff, and I got to check to see did that person get a similar prescription at some other doctor? Because yeah. one of the things that people were doing in the past was they they take all these triplicates from from pharmacy to pharmacy. They'd gather them, and they'd be having this stockpile of all these medications. Well, now I can go in and say, well, wait a second, you just last week went to this other doctor and they right. go, oh, how do, how do you know that? Well, I'm looking at a database. So that, I think that's something that's good. It's not across every single place in the entire country, but I think it needs to be. Okay, Dr. John LaPook, thanks so much.